All right, next up is question three on the worksheet. It says match each vector function to its corresponding graph. Okay, for the first vector function, r of t is cosine 4t, comma t, comma sine 4t. Okay, and just as we did in question one, part c, we can think in terms of parametric equations. So x is cosine 4t, y is t, and z is sine 4t. Okay, so notice here that x squared plus z squared, that's cos squared 4t plus sine squared 4t, and that's equal to 1 by the Pythagorean identity. And so this implies that the curve described by r of t lies on the cylinder x squared plus z squared is equal to 1. Okay, so looking at these options here, we see that graph 6 here, right, appears to lie on this cylinder of radius 1 there that runs along the y-axis in this case. And notice if you were to project this curve, which is another circular helix like we saw in question 1c, if you project this curve onto the xz plane, right, cos 4t and sine 4t, let's just describe motion along the unit circle in the xz plane, and then the y coordinate, well that's t, right, that's an increasing function with respect to t, right, so as you let time increase, okay, you're going to be wrapping around this cylinder here, forming this circular helix. So 1 is matched with graph 6. Cool. Okay, so let's look at part 2. R of t, this is t comma t squared comma e to the negative t. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and think in terms of parametric equations, okay, and I'm going to look at the projections of this curve described by r of t onto the coordinate planes to get a feel for the overall shape of the curve described by r of t. Okay, so here x is t, y is t squared, and z is e to the negative t. So if I look at the projection of this curve onto the x, y plane, right? So in other words, I'm just going to ignore the z coordinate and I'm just going to think about x and y. So x is t and y is t squared. Well, these are parametric equations for this parabola. Okay, so if I project the curve onto the xy plane, I should get a parabola. And looking through these options, okay, that's actually only the case in graph 2. So really this alone, and by the way here I'll draw this in, you can see that we have this parabola. If I think about projecting this graph down, Okay, we're going to get that parabola. That's only the case in graph 2. So that, that's enough to single out graph 2. Now, just to kind of fill out a little bit more detail, though, before moving on, if you were to project on the xz plane, well, here x is t and z is e to the negative t, right? this is a parameterization for this decaying exponential curve. And again, in graph 2, notice if I project this curve now onto the xz plane, I'm going to get this decaying exponential curve, okay? So that also makes sense. And then lastly, if you project the curve onto the yz plane, where y is t squared and z is e to the negative t, it's a little bit harder to describe. Notice that y is greater than or equal to zero for all t, and likewise z, this is uh, strictly positive for all t. When t is zero, okay, we're gonna actually be on the z axis there at the point zero, one. Okay, so we're gonna look at this, uh, u-shaped curve in the first quadrant. Let me hit the axis at 0, 1, and you see that here, if I project this curve onto the yz plane, I'm going to get this picture there. So yeah, that all makes sense. Good. So it's uh, vector function 2 to graph 2. All right, let's check out number 3. Here we have r of t is t comma 1 over 1 plus t squared, comma t squared. All right, so you can approach this in really the same way. You can look at projections. So if you project on the xy plane, x is t and y is 1 over 1 plus t squared. This is a parameterization for what's a bell-shaped curve. It's y equals 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, so thinking about our options here, if I project onto the xy plane, I should see this bell-shaped curve, and I see that here in graph 4. 
right, so it comes up to think about pushing this curve onto the xy plane and yep I'm gonna see that bell shaped curve there and then just fill out a little more detail xz plane that's x is t and z is t squared so get a parabola there so if you push this curve onto the xz plane yeah we do get that parabola it's gonna be right there and then lastly projection on the yz plane y is 1 over 1 plus t squared z is t squared well this is again sort of a complicated curve um, but do notice that for all t y is strictly greater than 0 and less than or equal to 1 and z is always non-negative get this curve uh, in the first quadrant it looks like this when t is 0 okay we're gonna be at the point 1 for y and 0 for t so if I project graph 4 onto the yz plane again I do see that I get what I see in this picture right there's that projection right there sweet okay so pressing on then to 4 r of t is e to the negative t cos 10 t e to the negative t sine 10 t and then e to the negative t all right so thinking in terms of uh, parametric equations notice here x squared plus y squared well that's e to the negative 2t cos squared 10t plus e to the negative 2t sine squared 10t if you factor out an e to the negative 2t and use the Pythagorean identity this simplifies to just e to the negative 2t so in other words x squared plus y squared is e to the negative 2t now another way to say that is that the distance from the origin, which is really just r in polar coordinates, that's the root of x squared plus y squared, that's e to the negative t. So as we let the parameter t increase, our distance from the origin will decrease. It actually decreases at an exponential rate. And so what we're seeing here is a spiral curve if we project the curve described by r of t onto the xy plane. Okay, so with that in mind, well, it's got to be graph one right so that would be graph one so four is matched with graph one um notice also the z coordinate the z coordinate is just e to the negative t so as x and y are spiraling around in this fashion okay the height is also approaching zero at an exponential rate so right if you think about just smushing this curve down on the x-ray plane you're going to see that spiral effect and then the fact that we're moving downward here like this corkscrew pattern that's just a reflection of the fact that the z coordinates going to zero cool all right and then two more there for five cos t sine t sine of five t all right so here notice that x squared plus y squared well that's one that follows from the pythagorean identity so that tells us that our curve lies on the cylinder x squared plus y squared is one so looking at graphs three and four, well, those both appear to lie on a cylinder. And notice also the i and j components for vector functions five and six are the same. It's the k components that differ. Here, for the k component, right, we have sine of five t. So if z is sine of five t, that's oscillating between negative one and one. It's got to be graph five. Okay, so we're oscillating around our height Okay, and if we were to project this curve onto the xy plane, we're just going to see circular motion. Okay, cool. So, yeah, 5 is paired with graph 5, and then that leaves us with function 6. R of t is cos t sine t log t. So, just as we noted in the last vector function, again, right, our curve will lie on the cylinder. x squared plus y squared is 1. And now, right, since the uh, z coordinate is the natural log of t and this has a vertical asymptote when t is zero you can see that reflected in this graph right graph three that tail there is really coming from the fact that z is asymptotic at t equals zero and if we were to project this curve onto the xy plane we're going to just see circular motion and as we already noted here this curve lies on the cylinder. All right, so that does it, right? 
uh, function six goes with graph three, and we're done. All right, thanks so much.